Hello, I'm Dr. Jim Wright. Today we're going to show you how we fillet fish. We're going to show you a great big variety of fish, different body shapes, sizes, and how to do several different kinds. There's a few things we got to talk about before we show you about the fish, and that is one, the fish cleaning stand. It's got to be at the right height. It can't be way up here and you can't be bending over to clean fish when you get done. Remember, when you're cleaning these fish, it's at the end of the day usually. You've been tired, you've been out fishing all day. Make it easy on yourself. Get the fish cleaning stand at the height that's made just for you. It works. It's gonna save your back and you're gonna enjoy cleaning fish. The second thing is, after you've got the stand right, remember, cleaning the fish and filleting the fish began the minute you caught them. You gotta put them on ice. You gotta put them on ice right away. The second thing you did was either you kept them alive in a live bait well, or you put them on ice right away, one or the other. But the minute they die, put them on ice for sure. The second thing is, if you can, bleed these fish right away. Then put them on ice. If you're gonna be out away from the dock for any length of time, gut them. Take out all the guts. You can leave the head, tail, everything else on, but just take the guts out of them, okay? Your fish is gonna be much better quality Remember, if you first bleed them, secondly, get them on ice right away. And the third thing is, after you get back at the dock, keep them on ice here too. Don't let them get hot while they're sitting at the dock waiting for you to be cleaned. The next thing we gotta talk about is knives. I got a whole variety of them to show you. Now, If you're cleaning a big fish like an amberjack, you need something, a blade this big. You can't do it with a little knife. It's not possible. You can sit there and work your fingers to the bone. When you get to smaller parts of it, you can use a smaller knife. When you get to the little fish, you can use a short filleting knife such as this one. This is what it's designed to do. If you want to go down the length of a backbone of a fish though, you've got to have a longer one. You can slide down a backbone much better with that longer filleting knife. Now, you've seen a whole lot of white handles here, but that's not the only kind we use. This is a Chicago cuttery knife. They work great. This is a familiar Normark Rapala filleting knife. They're absolute super every single time. All of them are good. When you're going through a backbone, you need something that's designed to go through a backbone. There's other special knives. If you're trying to dig out all of the red meat that's along the spinal cord, that's what this little spoon's been designed for. This especially works great when you're cleaning salmon. Now, all of those are the knives. What are you gonna do? Hold the fish with something. Use this wire glove. It's also made by Normark, but believe me, it works. You've gotta hold that fish and you aren't gonna accidentally cut your hand that you're holding the fish with. Use them. Now, the fish gets slippery and if you're gonna pull off the skin, sometimes it's nice to have an old torn up glove that you can throw away, that you can just grab a piece of the meat with that won't slide through your fingers and pull the skin off. You can use any kind of cloth for that. I use old gloves. Last thing I got sitting right here is the fly swatter. When you get in and you're hot and sweaty, it's horrible to have a stupid fly sitting there biting the heck out of you while you're cleaning fish. Don't forget it. The next thing we gotta do is we got to get these knives sharp. Now, how do we do that? We can do it the easy way, or we can do it the hard way. The expensive way is one of these electric knife sharpeners. I swear, I'm lazy. 
They work good, they're easy to use, so I use one of these. The next way are these little files. When you want to put a quick little touch on one of those things, this works, okay? Other people use these stones. They're steels, as they're called. They come with a lot of knives, but they really do work good. I'm just not proficient at using one of them. The last thing I use is one of these for a knife sharpener or a hook sharpener. This is quick, and at the very last minute, when I don't have time to use one of those special electronic devices, I use these. They work, and they're quick, and they put a great point on the, on the knife, so when you want a sharp point, you can really work well with one of these. One of the first things that you always need is running water when you're cleaning fish. You've got to have something so you can spray, clean your hands up, and you need claws around just to wipe your hands periodically. So don't start fishing and don't start cleaning your fish until you're really ready. On this videotape, you'll see several different faces and hands as well as hear several different voices. Because over the years, I've asked my friends to teach me how they clean their fish so that I can learn more. Speckled trout or spotted sea trout are a popular southern and mid-Atlantic saltwater species. So we're going to get an expert to show us his favorite method of filleting these fish. Well, I know, but I'm just saying there's, there's, there's lots of different ways, but the answer is I just want a little picture of once in a while a fish being clean, not just a fish. Frank has this fish already scaled. He then removed the head and the intestines. Next, he cut along each side of the dorsal fins, and then he removed the dorsal fin portion. The only bones are now the backbones, and it's ready to cook. Show me the top of it. Turn it over one time. There you go. That's what I'm all the meat is just new. Now, flounder is another extremely popular species, both for catching as well as on the table. And in one form or another, its distribution is worldwide in both warm and in cold water. Here, a long, thin blade is passed along the backbone and then hugs the ribs as the blade pierces the skin along the dorsal and the ventral fins. Again, it's scaled first. In this case, the head and the intestines were removed just in case somebody wanted to make a pocket inside of the fish instead of cutting through the skin. And then that pocket would have allowed the fish in the body, it is, to be stuffed. However, they changed their mind. Now, whenever Gregory goes to work up in Watcher Creek filleting flounders, I mean a crowd gathers. This man's a craftsman. If I put this on one thousandth of a second, I can get you in slow motion here. <laughs> <laughs> oh.